Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the biggest night in foundation, the 2022 Foundation Lady Awards. I have tried foundation after foundation this year, and this is where I'm gonna tell you the best of the best. We're gonna break down everything, tinted moisturizers, matte formulas, dewy formulas, CC creams, and more. And of course, the two biggest awards of the night, the viewer's choice for best new foundation and the Foundation Lady Award for Foundation of the Year. Let's jump right in. Starting with the best high-end tint or tinted moisturizer. Norm, will you open the envelope, please? Okay, that's gonna take forever. The winner is the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint, which I'm using here in the shade G11. You may not have caught this one on my channel unless you watch my Film Star Foundation series, which is where I break down a beautiful foundation look that I see on an actress in a movie or TV show. So you know how you'll be watching a movie and you love the makeup a certain character is wearing? Well, that's where I do the work for you. I look up their makeup artists and research the little tips and tricks used on the set and share it with you. So check those out if you have a chance. So in this video, I was demonstrating the foundation they used on actress Kristen Stewart when she played Princess Diana in the movie Spencer. And her makeup artist used the Glossier Skin Tint. This skin tint is super sheer, even when I use two layers. But what I really love about this is how beautifully it plays with other products. You put this on and everything else from your concealer to your blush to your powder just lays beautifully on top and when you're finished you're left with a very natural but very classy makeup look and I'm going to be giving some tips and tricks throughout the night with these foundations so my tip for this one is that this is a great one for those of you that have to rush out the door in the morning and want just the tiniest bit of coverage to even out your skin tone without looking like you're wearing makeup moving on to the best budget tint or tinted moisturizer and the winner is the Wet n Wild Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator, which I'm using here in the shade Fair. This was one of the biggest surprises of the year. When I first saw this in the tube, I thought, there's no way I'm going to like this. This shade looks orange. But oh well, I'll purchase it anyway, and if it looks terrible, at least I'll have a funny video. Well, don't be deceived by the appearance of the shade in the tube. It turned out to be a beautiful shade and just a sheer joy to work with. The application is so smooth. It feels very moisturizing. My other makeup blends in very well with it, and this lasts all day for me. Now, in this video, I was comparing the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator to the Rare Beauty Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer. Both are solid products. I think that the Rare Beauty is probably a little better suited to normal to oily skin, whereas the Wet n Wild I think would work best on normal to dry skin types. But while both are good tinted moisturizers, I have to say I like the Wet n Wild better. Not only did I like how it felt on the skin, but I found the application process to be easier too, as the Wet n Wild didn't get caught on any of my dry patches as I was blending it out. And of course, I love the price. But I'm not just giving this an award because it's the best of the quote, cheaper tinted moisturizers. I'm actually saying that this holds its own with higher end tinted moisturizers as well. And my tip for this one is if you're planning to try it, I found that the best method of application was to apply with my fingers and blend it in about 80% and then finish up by using a damp beauty sponge to blend it the rest of the way and really help it melt into the skin. All right, this next category is a big one. Let's go in for the best overall high-end liquid foundation. And the winner is the Kosas Revealer Skin Improving Foundation. This one took the makeup world by storm this year and with good reason. This is a foundation that works well on just about every skin type in addition to having a beautiful natural finish that's not too matte and not too dewy. It's really no surprise to me how popular this one is because... They seem to create a foundation that just hits right down the middle and appeals to so many, including those with sensitive skin. In addition to just looking stunning on the skin, it's also a clean brand, meaning it's vegan, there's no parabens, sulfates, formaldehyde. So for those of you who are very conscious or concerned about the ingredients you're putting on your skin, this is a good one for you. This feels divine on the skin. It's silky, it's creamy, it has so many skincare ingredients in it, like... Hyaluronic acid, squalane, niacinamide. So as you put this on your skin, it almost feels as if you're applying skincare. 
Now, it's technically a medium coverage foundation, but I was easily able to build it up to full without any caking whatsoever. And my tip for this one is to apply using your fingers first and blend it halfway and then go in with a damp beauty sponge and blend it the rest of the way. I found that it, when I went in straight away with just a sponge, a lot of the foundation was soaked up by the sponge. And by the way, it's not just the foundation that's winning people over. I've heard from so many people saying that the Kosas Revealer Concealer and their cloud setting powder is holy grail status. So this company just knocked it out of the park this year altogether. Okay, so that was high end. Now let's go for the best overall liquid budget foundation. And the winner is the Believe Beauty Skin Finish Foundation. Now, just to give you a little perspective on how good this foundation is, this was in the running for the biggest award of the night coming up soon, which is Foundation of the Year. This foundation was $5 and it was literally in the running against several high-end foundations. And I have one of my subscribers to thank for this because I had never heard of this line before she mentioned it to me. Like the Kosas foundation I just reviewed before this one, the Believe Beauty is also one of those foundations that's great for a wide variety of skin types. It's medium to full coverage, not too matte, not too dewy, and it lasts all day long. Now this is sold at Dollar General stores and I've also been seeing it online from walmart.com. For a while there, it appeared as if some foundation shades were available at Dollar General online, but that's always been a bit confusing and really that's the only thing I hold against it is just its current lack of accessibility. I'm so fortunate to have lovely subscribers who watch this channel from all around the globe, so I don't want to spend too much time on a foundation that's only available to a portion of us, but I will quickly mention, though, that the best aspect of this foundation is that it blurs imperfections so beautifully. In fact, at the end of the night, I looked in my magnifying makeup mirror, and I've never had a foundation look that good up close at the end of a long day. It wasn't sinking in my pores, and it was still blurring my skin. So my tip for this one is, if you go to the Dollar General to pick up this foundation, do yourself a favor and pick up one of the Believe Beauty primers as well. I did a comparison of my higher-end primers to the Believe Beauty primer in this video, and the primer performed just as well as my more expensive one. So for around five bucks, you can't beat it. All right, let's break those liquid foundations down even more. The best high-end dewy foundation goes to Estee Lauder Double Wear Sheer Long Wear Makeup, shown here in the shade 2C3 Fresco. It's kind of funny that this ended up being in the dewy foundation category because Estee Lauder describes this as a matte finish foundation. And really the only way, in my opinion, to achieve a matte finish with this is to powder it. But everything else that Estee Lauder says about this one on their website, I find to be totally accurate, including it being 12 hour wear, sweat resistant, along with no cakiness or streaking. So this is a light to medium coverage foundation. Although I was able to build it up to a good solid medium coverage, I wouldn't suggest trying to use this as a full coverage because the beauty of this one is that it's one of those that lets your freckles peek through while making your skin look more even toned and radiant. Another thing I love about this one is that it's fragrance free as a lot of times, as you know, department store foundations can be overwhelmingly perfumey, but this one isn't. This is also a great everyday foundation and a great date night foundation. So an everyday foundation because obviously it's so sheer, so easy to apply, but also a great date night foundation as I could just imagine candlelight bouncing so beautifully off of the skin when you have this on. I mean, I don't know for sure because I have a three-year-old, so right now date nights are dinner at the Cracker Barrel, <laughs> but you know what I mean. And my advice for this one is, you know, it's so quick and easy to apply. I applied with a sponge in the video, but you can actually just put a drop or two of this in your hands, rub them together and apply like you would a moisturizer and it looks every bit as gorgeous. All right, so we've covered high end. So now our winner for best budget friendly dewy foundation is the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Sensitive Skin Serum Foundation, which I'm using here in the shade 01 Light. I was so impressed with this one. I ended up doing a long review and then went back later to do a 60 second short about it. 
because I wanted to reach as many people as possible to tell them how amazing this is. I actually went back and bought this in a second shade to match my skin on self-tanner days. And you know, if I go back and buy a second bottle of any foundation, that means I really like it. Now, with the exception of this foundation being slightly dewier than the Estee Lauder Double Wear Sheer, which I just reviewed, I feel comfortable calling this a dupe for the Double Wear Sheer. They feel and look very similar on the skin. They both have light coverage and give you that radiant lit from within glow. What I especially love about the Neutrogena foundation though is that it's specially formulated for sensitive skin. It's a gorgeous foundation and in my opinion, the best foundation Neutrogena has made to date. Now my tip for this one, I have to say a lot of my tips are about the best way to apply a particular foundation, but the truth is with this one, you can apply it however you want, whether that be with fingers, a brush, a sponge. I've tried it all three ways with this foundation and the application is basically foolproof. So pick your preference and go for it. All right, let's switch over now to the best matte foundations of 2022. So the winner for best high-end matte foundation goes to the Bobbi Brown Skin Long Wear Weightless Foundation, which I'm using here in the shade Cool Ivory. This is another foundation I presented in my Film Star Foundation series because this is the foundation that they use on Rachel Brosnahan on the show The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. If you've ever watched the show and you're obsessed with perfect skin like I am, you'll notice that she has the most beautiful complexion. Her skin doesn't look overly matte or overly dewy. It's that wonderful in-between that gives you the perfect canvas for your other makeup to shine. Now, if you have a normal to oily skin type, this could be a possible holy grail contender for you. However, don't despair if you're normal to dry skin type, as I find as long as I hydrate my skin well beforehand, this works really well for me. This is what Bobbi Brown calls a light medium coverage foundation. I personally think it's straight up medium coverage. This dries down very quickly, it has a natural finish, and what I like so much about the finish is that it's matte without looking flat or dry. Now, if you touch this formula with your fingers, it has a very light and feathery feeling to it. And in fact, the texture of this one is very similar to the texture of another very popular foundation, which is the Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. Although this one has a fragrance, I will say that the fragrance to me is almost spa-like. It has kind of an essential oil scent to it, which doesn't bother me, but just be aware of that if you're sensitive to fragrances. And my biggest tip would be, don't try to build this one up. The formula looks best and gives you the nicest finish with just one layer. If you have any areas that need a bit more coverage, I would suggest going in with a concealer to spot conceal any problems afterward. And now let's switch over to our best matte budget foundation of 2022. And that goes to Revlon Color Stay Makeup, which I'm wearing here in a combo of shades 150 buff, 180 sand beige and a touch of 240 medium beige for a custom color. I did an extensive review of this foundation in a series I've just recently started called Classic Foundations. I did try some other budget-friendly matte foundations on my channel this year, but I just didn't feel like any of them surpassed my love for the Revlon Color Stay Foundation, which has been around for years. Now they've recently reformulated both their normal to oily skin version and their dry skin version. And I'm happy to say that I feel they are just as fabulous as ever. And really the biggest difference I noticed when using the new versions of the foundations was that the consistency of the liquid felt a little bit thinner and lighter to me while still providing excellent coverage. So both versions are oil-free, they're buildable, they're breathable, they're transfer resistant. In fact, Revlon even advertises this foundation as being mask friendly. I love this because it's fragrance free, it's affordable, it doesn't cake up on me. And I love that they offer some really beautiful neutral undertones. They're one of the only drugstore foundation lines that offers true neutral undertones. And my tip for this one, especially if you're a foundation wearer with fine lines, is to go in with just a bit lighter of a hand over the areas where you have lines, around the laugh lines, in between the eyebrows, etc., 
Technically, we should be doing that with all foundations, but anytime we're using a matte formula, we want to be extra careful to not have extra foundation sitting in those areas. Okay, I'm going to be throwing in a couple of short awards in this video, starting with this one, which is Best Overall Foundation for Photographs. And that winner is the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish Natural Face Powder. This is the foundation I'm wearing in my official, if you will, foundation lady photo. This powder builds up beautifully from sheer to full coverage. It has just the tiniest bit of sheen to it that makes it look like skin versus looking powdery. It's great in photos, doesn't have any flashback. It's basically my ride or die foundation for when I'm taking photos. All right, moving forward with our awards, we're gonna go to the winner for best foundation with a high SPF. And that goes to Misha M Perfect Cover BB Cream SPF 42. In my review on this foundation, I talk about how I can almost feel this BB cream on my skin, but that it doesn't bother me the way it normally would with other foundations because I know it has such a high SPF and I almost feel as if it's physically blocking the sun's rays when I'm wearing it. In addition to having a high SPF, this is just a really good foundation. It looks beautiful on the skin. You can get a nice full coverage with it. It evens my skin out almost perfectly. And one of the best things about this line is their wonderful neutral olive undertones. I've talked with so many viewers who love this product as well. And considering that you can often find this on sale for a purchase price of around $12, you might want to give it a shot if you haven't tried it yet. My tip for this one is not to panic when you first apply it and it looks gray on your skin. It has a very neutral undertone, which is great for canceling out redness, but it does take a second to sink in and kind of meld with your skin. All right, starting a new category here. Next up, we have the winner for the best high-end serum foundation, which goes to the LYS Beauty Triple Fix Serum Foundation. This category was a tight race as there were so many serum foundations that hit the market. So LYS stands for Love Yourself. This is a little embarrassing, but when I reviewed this at the beginning of 2022, I was in the phase where I was trying not to look at anything about the foundation before I tried it in an effort to be as non-biased as possible, which is a bit silly because often you get useful information from the company on how to apply the foundation, etc. So I don't do that anymore, but I went into that review completely blind. I looked up the word LIS, L-Y-S, thought it was French, looked up the French French pronunciation and the entire video referred to it as lease, like a big dummy. So needless to say, I need to redo that video, but all joking aside, this foundation did nothing but show me love. This is one of the most skin-like foundations I've ever tried. It has a little bit of sheen on my skin, which gives it that lovely, I've just lightly moisturized look, but not overly dewy. It's so soft on the skin, really, the two words that describe it best are skin-like. It's everything I look for in a foundation, and it's truly in a league of its own. And just for fun, three other points of interest on this one. Number one, it's a black-owned beauty brand at Sephora. Number two, it's won a beauty award from Allure magazine. And number three, it only costs $22 at Sephora. Most of my drugstore foundations these days are hitting close to that mark, so I am just overall super impressed with this one. And now let's switch over to the best budget serum foundation of 2022. And the winner is the number seven Restore and Renew Multi Action Serum Foundation, which I'm wearing here on the right side of my face in the shade Calico. Now, a lot of you have shared with me that you've also gotten into this one, and I couldn't be happier. My whole goal of this channel is to help you find something you love. So to know that you are loving this one is such a thrill for me. This one has a very light texture. Number seven refers to it as a light to medium finish, but it's very pigmented. So I found a light layer applied to the face gave me a good medium coverage. Now, similar to the LYS, it also has that little bit of sheen, which makes it look more skin-like. When I put this on, 
my skin just looks more bouncy and a bit more youthful. It's it's just overall a fabulous formula. And my tip for this one is if you have equally pink and yellow undertones in your skin, then a neutral foundation will look best on you and help cancel out a bit of redness. And number seven is one of the few drugstore foundations I found that consistently offer neutral undertones in their foundation lines. Let's do another quick couple of awards here on the best foundation applicators I use this year. My high-end winner is, of course, the sponge that can't be duplicated, the Beauty Blender. It's basically the Meryl Streep of sponges. And my favorite budget option, which is also excellent, the AOA Studio Mochi Sponges. All right, our next award goes to the Best Influencer Foundation. And the winner is... Wayne Goss, the Luxury Cream Foundation. I doubt there are any beauty lovers out there who don't know Wayne Goss because he has worked so hard for years, building up his career as a makeup artist, makeup mentor on YouTube, and now he's a very successful entrepreneur, and I couldn't be happier for him. And let me just note that this ended up being a surprisingly tough category because influencers spend so many years reviewing product after product and become really knowledgeable about what works and what doesn't. So this was an especially tight race. But Wayne did such an outstanding job of creating a foundation that can have different finishes depending on what you put underneath. If you want it to look dewy, you can put on a luminous moisturizer or dewy primer underneath. If you want it to look matte, put a matte primer underneath. And if you don't put anything underneath, it has a satin finish. This cream foundation he created really packs a punch as it's comprised of 30% pigment. So you only need a little bit to get a really good payoff. I love how this feels on the skin. In the video I made about the foundation, I explained that it feels moisturizing on the skin, but not overly moisturizing like some of the balm style foundations that came out in the past year that feel more like a solid oil type of balm. And just a note, a huge thank you to him for using models of all ages to demonstrate how this looks. You know, we all age, it's part of life, and he's helping us enjoy and embrace it. And I just love him for that. We're now moving into the cream foundation category, and this next one is the winner of two awards. So the award for the best high-end cream foundation and the most underrated foundation of the year goes to... Salt New York Sneaky Balm Hydrating Skin Tint, used here in shade 11. This was one of those foundations that just blew me away because as I put it on, it didn't look like I was actually putting on foundation. It just looked like I was erasing the imperfections on my skin. It's one of those that can be built up and still remains almost undetectable. This foundation is vegan, cruelty-free, there's no fragrance, and one of the things I love most about their website is that they are so transparent with the models they use to demo the foundation. Not only do they use filter-free, unretouched photos so you can see what the foundation really looks like, but they don't even add any concealer, powder, or blush on top, which of course is what most companies do to obviously make a product look as enticing as possible, but not Salt New York, and I applaud them a hundred times over for it. Now, these foundation pans are magnetic, and then you can put them in a metal palette you can get on Amazon, or you can purchase one of their palettes. I personally love their palettes because they zip closed. And because I've been doing a lot of traveling this year, it's been so easy to throw in a couple of tints that match my skin tone, and then one of their blush tints and a contour tint all in one palette, and I save so much room in my carry-on. Also, this foundation does not oxidize on me at all. They have beautiful undertone options, including neutral undertones, and this will work on a wide variety of skin types. If you're oily, you may want to powder it a bit, but it's not overly dewy, so you can definitely still use this one. Dry skin foundation wears, this has such a nice finish. Sometimes I go without powder when I'm wearing it. And my tip for this one is on my busy days when I just don't have time to put on foundation, I'll grab this and use it as a concealer. I'll dab my finger in the product and put a little bit under my eyes, grab a tiny brush, cover any blemishes, and I'm out the door. And now for the best budget cream foundation. And the winner is the Milani Conceal and Perfect Smooth Finish Cream to Powder Foundation. 
This was one of those drugstore gems that was such a pleasant surprise. And if you have oily skin, don't let the fact that it's a cream scare you off because this dries down to a matte finish. And as a normal to somewhat dry skin gal, I find it nice too because once it dries down, I can go without setting powder if I want. So this will work for many skin types. With this product, you're getting a buildable to full coverage foundation for around 10 bucks. High-end cream foundations are usually some of the most expensive types of foundations when you consider the amount of product you get for the price. So this is not only a really pretty product, but a really affordable one as well. And the color payoff on this one is incredible. You only need to go in with a light layer to get a good solid coverage. Now, my tip on this one goes out to anyone who has fine lines under the eyes. Usually I go in with my cream foundations and take them right up underneath the eye all the way to the lower lash line. But because this one dries to a matte finish, I suggest just using concealer under the eyes or going in with a very light hand in that area to avoid any creasing. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's talk about something fun again. Like the fact that celebrities are kind of killing it in the cosmetic world these days. Like our next winner for best high-end foundation by a celebrity, which goes to Lady Gaga with her House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Medium Coverage Foundation, which I have on here in the shade 050. Cool. Okay, now... I just have to stop and tell you the story because I didn't tell it in the original video where I reviewed this. But over a decade ago, when Lady Gaga had been famous for, I don't know, maybe a year or two, I was living in the Chicago area and there was a news report on our local news station about her. Now, I don't remember what the story was, but I do remember that the anchor who reported it was an older gentleman. And when he pronounced her name, he referred to her as Lady Gaga. And my hubby and I still get such a kick out of it to this day that we refer to her as Lady Gaga, the Lady Gaga, or Lady of Gaga. Anyway, moving on. This Lady Gaga foundation is lightweight and good for all skin types, including sensitive skin. It has clean ingredients along with being vegan and cruelty-free. And I just love how lightweight this one feels. And this was one of those foundations that came out this year that had that special something in it. I don't know what the particular ingredient is, but it's one of those that when you look at your face head on, it looks very natural and almost satin matte. But then when you turn your head and get that light bouncing off of it, it has just a very subtle sheen to it, which is what gives it that very natural skin-like look. Very similar to another brilliant foundation that came out this year, which is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. And my advice for this one is to be aware of their shade naming system. It's kind of the opposite of what we're used to with most foundation brands. So in the House Lab system, foundations that have a pinky, rose, or peachy undertone are referred to as warm, and foundations that have a yellow, golden, or olive undertone are referred to as cool. All right, we are working our way through this list and soon up will be our viewer's choice award and foundation of the year. But before that, let's go to the best budget celebrity foundation, which hands down goes to Drew Barrymore's Flower Beauty Light Illusion Liquid Foundation. Now this one's been out for a while, but I didn't try it until this year. And right here you can see me applying it to the left side of my face in the shade Ivory. If a makeup artist put this foundation on me and I didn't see the bottle, I would think they were using a high-end, I'm talking expensive, luxury brand foundation. This one blows me away. And in fact, it reminds me of one of my all-time favorite foundations, which is the L'Oreal Pro Glow Foundation. They both have that beautiful, luminous, but not oily finish on the skin. If you have normal to dry or even just slightly oily skin, I think this would work for you. It has buildable coverage. It's fragrance-free. 
I would love it if they would add a few more neutral olive undertones to the line, but other than that, this foundation is near perfection. And my advice on this one, if you have oily skin, do yourself a favor and pick up the Flower Beauty Jet Set Invisible Powder Spray to set your foundation with. It's an innovative way to set your foundation and really helps to mattify it without making it look cakey. Just make sure to spray it before you do your eye makeup so you don't get the powder on your lashes. And we have another quick award here for the best overall BB cream, and it's one I reviewed very recently. It's the Joa Beauty Perfect Complexion BB Cream, which I'm wearing here in the shades Ivory and Vanilla mixed together. And if you watch my most recent video where I demo this one, you'll know that I fell in love with the finish of it. It has that little gleam that you get from the foundation that reminds me once again of that fabulous skin-like finish you get when using House Labs foundation or the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. So definitely check that one out when you have a chance. Moving over to powder foundation now, we have the winner for best overall powder foundation. And the winner is the Zuzu Lux Mineral Powder, which I'm using here in shade D17. Now there isn't a high end and a budget category for this one because for me, there is one and only one that takes the cake in this category, and that's the Zuzu Lux Mineral Powder. This powder is so versatile. It can be used wet or dry. It can make light coverage, full coverage. I sometimes even take a small stiff brush and use it as a concealer on my spots. And it looks stunning no matter how I use it. And it's one of the only powders I can use that doesn't oxidize orange on me. Additionally, they use natural sourced ingredients and you can just purchase the pans and refill your compact when you finish with one instead of having to buy a new full compact every time. This for me is holy grail. And if you've watched my channel, you know I rarely give a foundation holy grail status, but for powder foundation, this is it for me. And my biggest tip for this one, especially when you go for a full coverage look, but you still want it to look like skin, is to take a spray sunscreen made for the face after you apply the powder and watch the magic happen. It's incredible. Let's go ahead and wrap it up with CC creams. So for best high-end CC cream, I chose the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Nude Glow Lightweight Foundation Plus Glow Serum with SPF 40, used here in the shade Fair. Now, I have a confession to make. I've tried samples of every IT Cosmetics CC Cream version that they have ever made, and there have been a lot. And for whatever reason, whether it was the shade or the texture or how it sat on my skin, I've just never been able to make them work for me until I tried the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Nude Glow. So if you're like me and have been hesitant to try this one, you might wanna get a sample because for me, this was a completely different experience. If you have dry skin, this is like a tall glass of water because it's made up of 90% skincare ingredients. It holds up surprisingly well for me considering how moisturizing it is on the skin, and I immediately fell in love with how it looks on the skin. It's another one of those that gives you that lit from within glow, and seeing as many of us are coming into the bitterly cold winter months, this is an excellent one for when you need that extra boost of moisturizer. Now, just some advice on this, be aware, because this is so creamy and moisturizing, dry down time for this formula takes quite a bit longer than most foundations, so just be aware of that so you don't accidentally transfer it onto your clothing before it's dry. And the winner for the best budget CC cream goes to the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream, which I'm showing here in the shade 210 in light which is clearly not the right shade for me, but I decided to just roll with it in this video and base my opinion on the actual formula and not the shade I picked out. And when comparing this one to the IT Cosmetics CC Cream that we just talked about, and which a lot of people compare it to, I can tell you that they are similar. However, the ELF version feels a little bit creamier, a little bit silkier, and offers a little bit more coverage. However, if SPF is important to you, the IT Cosmetics offers SPF 50 versus the e.l.f. which offers SPF 30. Now this usually runs for around $14 depending on where you purchase it, which at first I was a little shocked by because I'm so used to e.l.f. foundations being around the $6 mark, but this is so worth it. I loved how this looked and felt on my skin. And my advice for this one is if you're hesitant to try this, because you aren't able to swatch the colors before purchasing, don't let that stop you because e.l.f. has a fantastic 
shade match guarantee, which I wish more companies would do. So you're not losing money if you accidentally pick out the wrong shade, which as most of us have experienced is very easy to do. And two more quick ones here. We have the best setting powder for foundation and the award goes to Clinique Blended Face Powder. This blurs my pores so beautifully, lasts all day and gives a smooth, non-cakey coverage. So let's show Clinique some love for this one. The winner for the best non-powder way to set foundation that I tried out this year was the Mally Beauty Evercolor Poreless Face Defender. This clear gel, if we want to call it that, is wonderful for those of us that have a bit of texture or lines on our skin that we don't want to emphasize by using powder. It almost invisibly mattifies and sets your makeup. And finally, the two biggest awards of the night, starting with the Viewer's Choice Award for Best New Foundation of 2022. And I am so pleased to announce that the award goes to L'Oreal Paris True Match Nude Hyaluronic Serum Foundation. Thank you so much to everyone who voted. I loved hearing all of your favorite foundations you tried this year. And I wasn't too surprised to see that this one was the winner. Back in November, when I was trying to guess what you guys would pick, I thought it would either be this one, the Lady Gaga House Labs, or the NARS Light Reflecting, because those were the ones in the comments that I kept hearing really positive comments about. But the L'Oreal True Match Nude Hyaluronic Serum Foundation is just fabulous. In the video here, I'm using the shades Very Light and Light mixed together. And... Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think this foundation was so popular that they've since added shades to the line. So if you were kind of in between shades before, like I was, I believe they have more options now. I've mentioned before that I love L'Oreal. I don't know who the head of the foundation department is, but I tip my hat to you because I think L'Oreal makes some of the best foundations, period, including high-end. This foundation feels silky on the skin, but don't let the serum aspect of it scare you if you have oily skin. Because I didn't find this serum-like in the sense that it added a ton of moisture or dewiness to the skin. It's just a really good all-around formula for almost all skin types, I would say. And once it dries down, it has a soft satin finish that looks very skin-like. Also, this foundation looks good in any type of light. I've never had a foundation that looks equally as good in indoor, overhead light, fluorescent light, sunlight, you name it. So I was really excited when I took my pictures in different types of light, like I do for all my videos, and I just couldn't find a bad shot of this one on the skin. Now my tip for this one, the only thing I don't love about this, and many of you have mentioned this to me too, is the dropper style bottle because they just get so messy. But I just had a sub share with me that she purchased a pump on Amazon and just switched it out for the dropper. So that's a fabulous idea for this one. And to my sweet sub who mentioned this to me, if you happen to be watching right now and wouldn't mind dropping the name of the pump you purchased in the comments, I would be so grateful to you and I'll add it to the description box for everyone. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, the 2022 Foundation Lady Foundation of the Year. And the winner is... The LYS Beauty Triple Fix Serum Foundation. Now you already heard me talk about this in the serum foundation category above, and I did not take this decision lightly. I have been mulling this over for months, and this one just kept coming to the front of my mind over and over, and I decided to go with my gut. I love everything about this foundation, from the bottle, to the price, to the shade options, to how it makes me feel when I'm wearing it. The simple fact is, it makes me feel beautiful and it makes me feel like I'm enhancing myself but not masking myself, which in my eyes is the definition of a perfect foundation. Congratulations to LYS on an outstanding product and for being the first ever overall winner of the Foundation Lady Awards. And if you enjoyed hearing what foundations I loved in 2022, then I think you might also be curious to know what foundations I didn't love in 2022. Click on this video to see five foundations I won't be wearing in 2023. Happy New Year, everyone. What a good boy. Yeah, let's fix your bow ties.